Carolyn Doobie here. Oh, what's the play for today? Well, today I'm going on a little bit of a color adventure with a mailbox. Plain old white, boring, basic, cheap <laughs> mailbox that we have outside our house. It's been white and boring for a long time. I've wanted to do something with it, but I never quite had the idea that made me actually take action and paint this thing until today. The vision that I have is the rainbow dripping down the sides of the mailbox. Now to make the paint drip, to make it run, I'm going to mix it with pouring medium. So in each one of these cups, that whitish creamy liquid that you see, that's Liquitex pouring medium, and I'm adding some Liquitex paints into this. I got the idea to do this when I was doing some paint pouring and I was doing it on canvases and I was seeing the way the color was moving and flowing and then it struck me, I can put this on just about anything. It doesn't have to be on just a canvas. So that's when the mailbox fate was sealed that it was going to get the rainbow running down the side. I chose to use the Liquitex paints for this because I know that they can handle sunshine well. They're very, very light fast and my mailbox is outdoors, so I want it to be able to handle all the seasons and all that Mother Nature throws at it. When you're mixing up your paint and pouring medium, you want to do it gently. I know it doesn't look like I'm doing it gently, but that's just because the camera's really sped up. You want to do it in a way that's gentle so that you don't put any air bubbles into it. Once the paint's all mixed up, it's ready to start sending that rainbow onto the mailbox. Here is our very plain, very basic mailbox that we've had for eons. And I am simply putting some paint on top and letting gravity pull it over the sides. You only get to see one side here with the video, but the same thing is happening on the other side. Those sticks that I used to mix it up with, those are the same things that I'm using to put the paint on there. You also might notice that this mailbox is not outside at the moment. That's actually in one of the rooms of the house. The reason why I did that is because it will take pouring medium a while to dry. And if it's outside, dust might get on it, leaves get on it, that kind of stuff. And I wanted it to be able to dry completely before I put it back out into the elements. While I was doing this, I was reminded that I am not the most patient person naturally. Because if I put a little bit of paint on there and it begins to run over, it will go a little bit more gently, a little bit more gradually, and give me a little bit thinner line as it goes over. And if I put a lot of it on there, it goes a lot faster. Well, I wanted the skinny lines and I wanted it to go quickly. I couldn't have both at the same time. I could have any one, but I couldn't have them both. So I was trying my best to be patient with this and just put small amounts on there and let gravity gently pull it over so that I could have skinny lines with it and have lots and lots of them so this thing will fill up with the rainbow. Are you wondering if this thing is gonna be able to hold up with the elements? Well, I was wondering the exact same thing too when I did it. Now I actually made the mailbox about five months ago. So it was outside all summer and into fall because I wanted to see if it would actually hold up before I shared it with you. And guess what? It looks as good now as it did when I poured it. It has held up to the elements of summer wonderfully. The next big test for it is can it handle winter with the freezing and thawing? I don't know how it's gonna do exactly, but I have pretty high hopes for how well it held up over the summer. So how did I know to use the Liquitex pouring medium to do this and not some other pouring medium? Well, that's because I've really gotten to know different pouring mediums as I've been diving into paint pouring. And each pouring medium does something a little different, has different characteristics, benefits, those pros, those cons. To me, there's no one perfect pouring medium. Some do certain things extremely well and other things do these things extremely well. So it's a matter of knowing what each pouring medium does when you've got a specific result you're trying to get. The more that I dove into paint pouring, the more experiments that I did to try and understand what was going on, the more surprised I was by the results because I was expecting certain things like exactly what kind of paint you're using or exactly the pouring medium that you're using. I thought those were some of the big things that impacted what a canvas looked like, and they weren't. They turned out to be the least important factors. And what I thought were small, minuscule little things, those actually turned out to be the biggest factors for impacting what a poured canvas looks like. I've taken what I've learned with that and I've put it into an online workshop called Paint Pouring Fundamentals. 
And in there, I break everything down step by step so that you too can understand all of the fundamentals of what's going on with the paint, why it's behaving the way it is, and how you can get the looks that you want when you're pouring. I've got just about all of the paint on here. The next thing is to let it completely dry. Here's a close up of what it looks like now that it's completely dry and it's out on the street. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you've been enjoying this video, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to know more about paint pouring, check out my online workshop, Paint Pouring Fundamentals. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.